Let's have a little bit uh, deeper dive into the situation on the ground in Ukraine and the Russian strategy uh, as I'm joined now by Professor Michael Clark. Uh, Michael, always great to be with you on, on this topic. I mean, again, we're focusing on Mariupol. W what is the latest uh, there? Remind us why it's such a focus still and what the tactics are for, for Russia at the moment. Yeah, it's important because it's a port on the Sea of Azov. It's important because it's the last place that stops Russia completing this land bridge between uh, the Donbass and Ukraine. But it's important now because it is the southern anchor of this move the Russians are trying to make from Izium. They're fighting pretty hard at Izium. The, the Ukrainians are attacking them north of Izium in the last few hours, it seems. But they're trying to draw a line from Izium through Donetsk to Mariupol in order to catch most of the Ukrainian armed forces in that area on the wrong side of it. So it's the southern anchor to this big strategic move the Russians are pushing and will be pushing over the next two or three weeks. We heard from the mayor of Mariupol. He said the people of Mariupol have nerves of steel, but even steel can break. I mean, uh, what are the chances that they can hold out? Uh, not great. Uh, I mean, flesh and blood can only do so much. And there are uh, credible reports that they, the Marines in Mariupol, the Ukrainian Marines in particular, who are one of three big units there, may have run out of ammunition. They say that a 1,000 of them have surrendered, and those reports have not been contradicted by the Ukrainian Ministry of Defence. So uh, I suspect that we're into the final hours of Mariupol. I might be wrong, but I don't think it'll last too much longer from a military point of view. I know we've also got a dived-in image as well, and then also some satellite images uh, showing some of the troop movements uh, that, that we've seen in and around this, this area. Yeah, the, the, the Marines seem to have got Azov-style steelworks back. Biggest steelworks in Europe, so it's a natural fortress. It's just so big. They lost it a couple of weeks ago. They seem to have got it back. It looks as if that's the last redoubt. And the Ukrainian forces are split now. They're in two pockets, even though the northern pocket seems quite big. It doesn't, I don't think there's many of them in that, the northern part of that pocket. And so once they're split into two pockets, then they can easily be surrounded. And that usually is the sign that there's not, there's not much left. And certainly that they haven't been able to be supplied. There have been lots of uh, covert supplies going in and out of the Azov-style steelworks, mm -hmm. in and out of the port by helicopter at night. It's been quite interesting to see what's actually happened. Those supplies have now pretty well run out, and so no more ammunition, no more food. Uh, they probably are on their very last uh, dregs of strength. How important is morale in the coming week? Well, in all wars, but in the coming weeks, and could Mariupol falling shift morale back into uh, Russia's favour? Well, it'll certainly shift momentum in Russia's favour because they have to have Mariupol for this strategy, this, this envelopment strategy that we mentioned to work. But it can work both ways. Um, I can imagine that the Ukrainians will be saying in the next few weeks, remember Mariupol, we're doing this for Mariupol. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes a heroic defeat has as much effect as Dunkirk did for the British. A heroic defeat can do more for your morale sometimes than a half-and-half -half victory. And, and flipping on the other side, if things don't go well for Russia in this now more focused, reduced strategy in the East uh, and the South and, and they take further losses, is it plausible that military leaders can start to revolt, or is that something that really does not happen? Well, at the very top level, certainly Putin is blaming the military and he's blaming the security services for the failure of this campaign so far. He was giving them an impossible job to do, and now he's blaming them that it's turned out to be impossible. <clears throat> on the ground, when they're faced with situations on the ground, all military leaders learn to adapt and they do what they can in the circumstances. The problem the Russians have had so far is that they carry out their orders to the nth degree. They just keep going, going sort of hammering tongues at what they were told to do, mm -hmm. instead of being a bit more flexible and realising the objective uh, by using their initiative. It may be that having been so badly beaten in the north, the commanders, they're not stupid, they will start to use their initiative and deliver the mission uh, in the ways that they think best on the ground. I expect we might see a bit more of that. Professor Michael Clark, as always, thanks so much.